Yeah. It's been going well. Uh, you know, just trying to get acclimated to a lot of things. Uh, the tempo, this heat, and uh, just kind of carry over what we finished off in OTA. Yesterday, Drew Brees was mentioning a, a budding chemistry that's developing between you and him, and especially with some full display on that deep catch down the, the left sideline. How would you categorize how your your chemistry is so far working out with him? Uh, you, we're growing, and, and that's all we can do is, you know, we take it a day at a time. Uh, and this is the best part now uh, with, with camp going on, to getting to know your teammates and, and us just learning each other, spending the most time together, and, and that's imperative. Uh, and, and that's the only way we're going to do it is to be able to talk to each other, grow a day at a time, and just stay in each other's ear and communicate. So it's going well. Uh, you know, Drew's very vocal, and, and I think that's really good, and it makes it easy. Uh, so it, it's going well, and we're just going to keep getting better at it. What's the process like for a receiver to get used to a, to a quarterback? I think maybe the people think about a quarterback getting used to the way a receiver breaks his routes off. But for you, is it like uh, the way the ball spins out of his hand, the, the you know, way it gets to you? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it's a quarterback's timing. Uh, some quarterbacks deliver the ball earlier, some some a little bit later. It's the trajectory of his throw. It's the speed of his throw. It's uh, and it's just. You know, the biggest thing you're trying to get to is, you know, being on the same page and being able to, uh, to, to know what Drew's about to say or know what Drew's about to do before he says it or thinks it. We're, we're on the same page. So uh, it's a difficult thing to get to. But, you know, like I said before, that's why you're in camp. You're working towards that and, uh, you know, just learning each other. Said he's very vocal. Has he had to correct you and, and uh, point you back? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, he corrects himself. You know, that's just the type of guy he is. So uh, he's always in my ear. Whenever he sees something that could have been changed or done a little differently, he always tells me, and I'm open to it because I've got to get to know um, how him and Coach Payton like like how things are ran and done. It's so early in installation. You haven't really gotten to the wrinkles section of the playbook, but you already feel like an indication that they're going to use you in a variety of ways the way you like to be used, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we got a little preview of it in OTAs once we got through some of the deeper installs. Uh, but now it's kind of back to square one. You know, like you said, you know, it's a lot of those different wrinkles and a lot of different uh, a lot of different secondary players are going to go in a little bit later. But, uh, you know, in OTAs when we were doing it, it went really well. So. We're just going to keep building, keep stacking bricks on top of each other. Uh, Drew was talking about like a, a specific route yesterday where uh, it was like something you guys had talked about and then it finally like, clicked and happened on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, can you describe what that kind of process was, just like the conversations you guys had about that? I'm not sure exactly what play he was mentioning, but I mean, a lot of those things, I think he might have been talking about a basic I was running. Yeah. and. Uh, you know, a lot of times when you wrap around those basics and around those uh, linebackers, those linebackers will squeeze up underneath you to try and take away the throw. And he was just telling me, like, if they squeeze too hard, that first window may be open, so maybe throttle in there if you see that linebacker squeezing in there. And when I came back, he was kind of coaching me on it, and we were on the same page the next time it happened. It also happened on an out route and also a corner route. You know, when those corners start sinking up under your corner routes, uh, maybe keep it a little bit higher to where he can squeeze his throw in a little bit better. But it's conversations like that that just happen repetitively and all the time. Man. Jared, when you look throughout your career, uh, as far as yak yards after the catch, do you take a lot of pride in that? Because that's one thing a number of coaches have talked about, Jared Cook, is that, yeah, you have a nice completion, 15, 20 yards, but look at the yards after the catch, how much more he brings to the table. Uh, yak is important. Uh, it's one of my goals that I set every year. Um, it's one thing that I emphasize in my game uh, every year. I always set how much yak I want to get per reception and, and, and what, my, what I want my average to be. So, uh, and it's important for a receiver to understand what it brings to the game to get yards after a catch. And that's where most of your bulk yardage come from. So uh, it's very important uh, as a piece or element 